It's the red that's next to the black. 40. Ronnie has to get on it. If he can get the white somewhere over near that white. 46. Forty-seven. Don't hold your breath. Anything can happen. Fifty-four. Fifty-five. So just the yellow, the green, and the brown. Ronnie had a quick glance at the scoreboard. 60. 62. 65. No mistake on what was effectively match ball. That time, John Higgins was in first in this play with 45, but Ronnie O'Sullivan clears up with 80. Ronnie O'Sullivan wins the Embassy World Championship. He beats John Higgins by 18 frames to 14 after a fabulous final to win the £250,000 first prize. Sixteen. Graham Dot, sixteen. That could be his last shot. Okay, settle down, please. Ronnie O'Sullivan <coughs> just needs one red and a colour. I can't for the life of me think why Ronnie is uh, not playing the red over the pocket. Just red and black he needs. Okay, this should be a certainty, but we've just seen him miss a straight pink off the pot, off the spot. In it goes, though. One. And that. Six. Quite simply, seven. O'Sullivan has been the best player of the tournament. The smile up to his army of fans in the balcony. I'm sure the smile was probably to his mother who was sitting up there. Fourteen. To win the Embassy World Championship for the second time is something that most players Come have on, never James, done please. once. Fifteen. A big credit should go to Graham Dot. What a tournament he's had. He's got nothing to 22. be ashamed of. He's played, at the moment, the best player in the world. And the handshake, I'm sure, will come from Graham Dot. What a tournament. O'Sullivan has been quite simply magnificent. He takes the NBC World Championship by 18 frames to 8 as the Crucible audience give him a standing ovation. Well played, O'Sullivan. So there's a lovely moment with Ronnie's mum, Maria. She only decided to come here to the Crucible a couple of hours ago. I think she was so nervous, she was waiting elsewhere. Wonderful moment for Ronnie and his mum. You can see how much it means to the two of them. So Ronnie O'Sullivan becomes only the fourth player to win the Embassy World title twice here at the Crucible. Just saluting his team. And now, as David Vine always used to say, it's payday. Ronnie will shortly be reacquainted with the famous old trophy he first lifted three years ago 
because Ray is down there with the presentation party. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you'll agree we've had an awesome display of snooker from Ronnie O'Sullivan. Ronnie, congratulations to you. It takes two people to play in a final before we talk to you. Graham, what a performance you've given over the championship and thank you very much. Ronnie, Ronnie, if I can borrow you for a moment, many congratulations. Cheers, uh, can you describe the emotions you're experiencing at the moment? Um, well, you know, uh, if it would have been close, obviously it would have been obviously a lot more emotional. But you know, I had such a big lead coming into tonight that you know it's like a little bit of an anticlimax. But you know, Graham took me all the way, and you know he's so tough. You know, saying underdogs this and that. But you know, at five and down, I was sitting there thinking, you know, this is uh, could be 18 nil to him. You know, but I was just I was just pleased I got going. You know, and. Uh, and turned it around. Um, what about the snooker you've played throughout the championship and also the last couple of days you've been incredibly composed even when things haven't gone well you just made them go well. Yeah well I mean my queuing hasn't been to you know the highest standard well, you know through the 17 days it, it, it you know I've, I've queued well in spells but you know plan B was um, you know Ray, Ray's come down here and he's had a new dimension to my game and uh, I don't want to give no secrets away, but, you know, he's really improved, improved me in certain areas and, you know, I think that's where I need to develop as a player. And uh, there's still room for improvement, so I'll, I'll just keep going and going, you know. I'm sure you'll concede your opponent is tenacious and very gritty. Oh, I mean, well, you know, people were saying, you know, he's, uh, he's going to be a one-sided final and I'll tell you what, I, I knew it wasn't going to be and, uh, you know, it, it was no surprise. He's, he's got qualities all over and... Um, you know, the players he's beat this week, you know, he's beat John Higgins, who's probably one of the greatest players that's ever played, Matthew Stevens, who always does well here, and, and you know, they're great players, you know, so what does that, so that says a lot, you know, what Graham's a great player as well, he's up there with the big boys, and, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if he, he's there. Uh, yeah. Graham. Graham, when you smashed your queue up in January and sort of uh, imagine four months later you'd be here playing in the World Championship final? No, absolutely no chance. I, can't, I couldn't beat anybody really where I was playing. What have you learned about yourself over this last championship in these last few days? Uh, well, the last few days I've obviously learned that Ronnie's phenomenally good. <laughs> so, uh, I managed to, um, the first couple of sessions I managed to at least stay with him and make a bit of a game of it, but this afternoon session he was dynamite. I mean, he's potting. They keep talking about his potting. It's phenomenal, but his safety's I mean, different class. I was welded all the time with the cushion. And I had no chance really the night. Graham, we've learned you're a great player too, and you'll come back and do it all again. I'm sure you'll believe in yourself. Hopefully. I mean, I'll believe myself a bit more now. Can I just suggest keep the cue, it's going okay. <laughs> uh, Ronnie, before we get over to some presentations, just um, what are you going to achieve from now on? You've taken the game to such a different level. You enjoy entertaining the crowd too. The way you play, people say you're not a rocket, you're a magician. Uh, what are you going to do with your game now? Um, I'm not too sure, you know. Uh... <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm really not too sure, you know. I'm just going to enjoy the moment. Um, and who knows next season, I don't know what I'm going to do, you know, I'm just going to enjoy it for the moment and, and take some time off in the summer. And if I do carry on playing, um, I just want to keep improving. Uh, so, that's it really. You've really entertained us and it's great to see your mum and all your family and your friends. You have a great support team around you, don't you? Yeah, I didn't expect them to be here, you know, I wanted to just get on with the job and uh, I told people that I didn't want them here. Maybe it's a bit selfish, but you have to look after number one sometimes and this is the greatest tournament any snooker player can play in and uh, it means so much to me. So, you know, and, and I just want to say for my dad, you know, it's, this one's for him, you know, so, for my man.
Graham, congratulations. Ronnie, just take a moment because there's a few things you've got to go through yet. Ladies and gentlemen, a great final. Two great players that really entertained us. PBSA and Mr. Peter Dyke from World Promotions. Gentlemen, welcome. The runner-up will receive a cheque for £125,000. Graham Dot. The winner will receive a cheque for £250,000, the championship trophy, a magnum of champagne victor, and the title, 2004 Embassy World Snooker Champion, Ronnie O'Sullivan. Ronnie just having a joke there with the false teeth. Little trick on Ray Reardon, I suspect. But a terrific moment there for Ronnie O'Sullivan. Stephen John with me in the studio here. What really has most impressed you about the way Ronnie has played the last 17 days? Cueing, concentration, what? Focus, Hazel. Absolute focus from ball one right the way through, um, but particularly from the quarter final. I don't ever remember him being like that. There's been sessions of it, but. I thought he's been, his focus has been brilliant all the way through. Yeah, I think Ronnie's uh, put on a snooker masterclass in the last two weeks and has set a benchmark, possibly a new high, uh, that's going to be difficult for other players to live up to. And it's going to... And took his eye off the pot. He didn't get on the blue as he intended and he was concentrating throughout the last 17 days. <laughs> so have won a couple of frames. But Ronnie O'Sullivan, he has been the master. I think Ali Carter will come forward. He claps his hands and congratulates Ronnie O'Sullivan. Ronnie O'Sullivan really has been superb throughout the 17 days. Let's hear from Ronnie and a gallant runner-up, Ali Carter. Ray is ready on the floor. That comeback against Judge Trump. <laughs> Petey Jr. there. There's no better feeling in the world than... Uh, Here in the Crucible Theatre. What a performance. 2012 Betfred.com World Snooker Champion, The Rocket, Ronnie O'Sullivan. Can use. 
And this has been absolutely fantastic. Ronnie Jr. And as you say, Dennis, like the true champion, we love the way he plays. And there's the little fist pump. Well done, Ronnie. Game needs Ronnie O'Sullivan, and it's very rarely you see that from... 75. It would be a record. It's not going to be a century. But what a fantastic defence of his world championship. A lot of people didn't think Ronnie O'Sullivan could do it. And Barry Hawkins coming along and congratulates him. What Ladies and gentlemen, your champion, Ronnie O'Sullivan. A century, Ronnie. 71. And he doesn't know it, but if he can clear up here, it'll be £25,000 for the children's charity, Jesse May. So come on, Ronnie. Missed the grain. Oh, lovely. What a shot. 76. Well, there's no better sight in snooker to see Ronnie O'Sullivan in full flow, that's for sure. 78. And all the questions will be, can he equal Stephen Hendry's 81. seven world mm. titles? You wouldn't put it past him. He's 45 years of age. He's playing as good as he's ever played. 85. Oh, pull up, White. Pull up. As all great champions do, Dennis, they finish in style. And they're certainly doing that now. Don't hit the black full ball. Just flick off it. Flick the black. 96. Oh. Take your time, Ronnie. Oh, he, oh. oh he's miscued. Oh, Unbelievable. No century break. One opportunity and great sportsmanship from Kyron Wilson. And nice to see the two players having a chat there. Six world titles for Rocket Ronnie O'Sullivan. Unbelievable. Just one away from Stephen Hendry's record. It's great to see them chatting away. But Ronnie O'Sullivan is the 2020 Betfred World Snooker Champion. Well played to both players. You know, I'm, I'm 28 years old. I'm not going to beat myself up too much. I'm playing the greatest of all time. Um, for me, it was a, a dream come true, knowing that I was going to be playing Ronnie in the final. Obviously, you know, you can't respect him too much or else he'll walk all over you, which is what's happened to me today. <laughs> so, um, yeah, for me, look, it's, it's brilliant. I've got the two most important people to me sat right here. They'll learn from this. It'll make them stronger as well. Listen, you said you rolled over today. But you could have rolled over at 8-2 last night, and you got yourself right back in the hunt late on. You showed some real character last night. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a fighter. I'll always be a fighter. Um, I just I really struggled in the first session. I think we probably both had a little bit of a hangover from the semifinals. Um, and then I just thought, you know, I'd just relax, let, let the shackles off, go for it. And um, I was just annoyed that World Snooker wouldn't let me carry on and play the whole match last night, to be honest with you. Well, you mentioned that semi-final. I've got to tell, I'm not sure whether your brother Taylor told you this, but he came into the press room and spoke to us and said, at the beginning of that frame, he didn't know whether he was going to wet himself or be sick. And he walked six miles around the circumference of Sheffield. There were millions of people glued to their televisions. You somehow scraped yourself off the floor. That semi-final victory to book this maiden final was breathtaking, and it will never, ever be forgotten. We're not quite sure how you came through that. I'm not sure myself. Um, yeah, obviously... You know, it, it could well have been Anthony stood here right now. Um, I got... Anthony, yeah. Um, 
yeah, I, I was a bit lucky in, in the decider, but yeah, it was a phenomenal match, one that I'll remember for the rest of my life. And um, yeah, hopefully, obviously, me and Anthony have a few more battles here over the years. But um, look, at the end of the day, the night belongs to Ronnie. He's, he was amazing throughout the final. Um, shown his class when he probably wasn't quite at his best and um, still stuck it out. So um, he was awesome this morning especially as well. I was very impressed. Well, that shows incredible class that you are once again turning the spotlight on Ronnie. One other thing I'd like to ask you, people sometimes say there are no characters in snooker anymore. It's absolute rubbish. Yours has been an incredible journey. It's only a few years ago you were off the tour playing a little bit for fun, working in a bar... You've had these two fantastic young men added to your life. It's lit a fire underneath you, and here you are up at world number six. This has been a great journey, and it continues to be so. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's um, lockdowns lit a fire on my head as well. The hair dye. Um, yeah, look, at the end of the day, I've, I've got phenomenal family, friends, um, coach, sponsors, everything behind me. Um, I'm a very lucky young man at 28 to have what I have and be playing the sport that I love and it's given me an amazing life and to perform in front of you guys has, has been an honour and I'm, I'm glad that obviously the crowd were allowed in for the final. It's, it's been amazing to perform in front of you guys. Kyron, spoken like a true champion. You have won three ranking titles and hopefully there will be a triple crown triumph coming soon. I can't hand you the silver medal, but would you please step forward to collect your runner-up medal and your check, yeah, that one, and your check for £200,000. Kyron Wilson, ladies and gents. Can we hug? We've both been tested. Ladies and gents, we are in the presence of sporting greatness. History has been made tonight by Ronnie O'Sullivan. Absolutely incredible. Your sixth world title, and now you are tied with Reardon and Davis. Amazing. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I never really think about titles because when I was a kid, I never dreamed that I'd be here. I just was playing for the fun of the game, and I still try and play for the fun of it. But to be here and, you know, uh, have had all them victories and... You know, it's um, yes, yeah, it's it's it's, it's, a, it's a dream, but it's it's kind of becoming a bit of a reality as well. So it's nice to be living your dream in in that sort of way, you know. Your last title was 2013. Was there a spell during those years where you thought you might never get your hands on the silver lady again? Um, uh, yeah, you never say never. But um, there was a part of me that decided that you know I didn't probably didn't play enough, and I still probably don't play enough to justify winning you know a tournament of this statue, you know, because it is, it's it's an endurance test, and if I'm not really an endurance type snooker player um, because I, I don't compete enough. But you know, uh, the lockdown gave me a chance to play on some decent. You know, because I haven't even got a practice facility, believe it or not. So my friend installed a couple of tables in his office in London. So I was able to play on good tables for a change, which was great. And I come here feeling comfortable with my tools, really. So um, I had a half a chance. I never expected to win it, though, to be honest with you. <laughs> Spoken <laughs> with real modesty for a guy that's lifted it five times and now six. Ronnie, there have been so many great achievements down the years. Your first Triple Crown triumph at the age of 17 in 1993 winning this one after a year off, a thousand centuries, your 19th uh, Triple Crown title when you won the UK in 2018. Where does this sit in the all-time performances of your career? It's got to be right there near the top, surely. Listen, any world title you win has got to be up there, you know. Um, it's just, it's just it's great to be able to, to win over the 17 days here. You know, you, you come here, you've got to play a lot of solid shots and be solid in, in all departments and, you know... Um, I, even though I might not have felt I'd done that, I must have done because these guys are too good on tour to give it to you, you know. And, and I just want to say, you know, as well for Kyron, you know, he's, he's a top, top player. You know, he's improving all the time and, and all that, you know, he fell off the tour. He was always going to get back on the tour. When you've got that desire and that hunger and that belief in your ability, um, yeah, you might have to work in a bar for a bit. You might have to do bits and pieces, but deep down that fire is, is burning bright enough so you, you actually get there in the end. And, uh, you know, so he's a winner and he will win this tournament one day. Not to put too much pressure on him, but um, <laughs> he's, he's a country mile above everybody else around his age. And, um, and, and, and he'll be the first to admit that he's always watching the Higginses, the Williamses and, and, and the likes of them players because he wants to, 
he wants to raise that bar as well. So when someone's that student about their sport, you know that there's a, they're going to have plenty of good days as well. So his, his time's definitely going to come. Beautifully said. All the pundits down in our studio in London are saying you are now unequivocally the greatest. 37 ranking titles. No one's more won more. Triple crowns. Tying Hendry on seven, is it even a relevance? Are you happy to be with Steve on six? I'm happy to be on, a, on, a cut on one. I was happy to get one at one stage. You know, two was great. And once I hit four, I went, you know, I can call myself like one of the greats, you know, because all the greats seem to have done it. I, I look at John Higgins and go, he's a great, you know. So if he's won it four times, that's what you've got to do to be a great. Probably put Mark Williams in there, just about. <laughs> well, he's won three. Uh, yeah, but I'll put it at four. So anything above four, you've got, you know, you, you kind of, you're in that sort of fantastic company, I suppose. But um, I think, you know, the, 30s, the way I look at it is, though, like, it's, with the records with Hendry, it's like, I, if, if, if I've played more tournaments him to get there, I think who got there first? I'm not sure, so you'd have to ask someone of the stats. But I'm always, if I've played a 1,000 tournaments and he's only made 500 and I'm just about beating his records, then I'd rather have Stephen's CV, do you know what I mean? So you, you'll have to get your statistic book out for that. But I suppose my, my thing has been longevity. You know, I've, I kind of, I go in and out of form, you know, my, my, my mind can wander sometimes, but then I just get a little bit of a taste for it and think, come on, let's see if you still got it. <laughs> and start to, you know, try and, try and have a go again, like I, like I have done this tournament, yeah. And just finally, a word for your fans. They have followed you for decades. This is a, a very difficult time for so many people. Yeah. Once again, they have turned out in great numbers. This has been a journey not just for you, but for everybody who supported you. And it must give you great pride that you've given people something to focus on other than the virus over the last 17 days. Yeah, well, listen, I want to thank my sponsors as well, Affinity. They've been fantastic, you know. Without their support, without 19.com support, you know, I wouldn't be able to put the hours in and sacrifice some of the things I had to sacrifice because like Kyron says we all need support you know we play snooker but it's nice to have people around you that are able to support you through that so as it, you can make it such a comfortable ride and hopefully Affinity are going to try and create a wonderful app where they can sort me out the perfect cue action because they're good at doing that <laughs> stuff so I, I've given them a task I said come on create it so as I can like you know get the perfect cue action because you know that's, as snooker players that's all we want to do that's all listen when you put in five or six hours in a day it's not because you like the sound of the balls hitting the back of the pocket it's like can I be in it straight enough so as when I come and play under pressure it stands up and that's why we put all the hours in not because you know we'd rather be sitting there watching match of the day to be honest or watching you off hanging off a some boat interviewing someone while he's doing the <laughs> rowing <laughs> yeah. well that was a long time ago as was your first major triumph 27 years of longevity ladies and gentlemen there is only one Ronnie O'Sullivan <laughs> And Ronnie, there is an old silver lady who's been waiting for a kiss for seven years. Would you please raise the trophy? You are the 2020 Betfred World Snooker Champion. Ha, 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 ha.